Hello, class, and welcome to episode three of the Nerd Academy podcast. I am your host, Jared Bachman Stubbs, and joining me is one of my many co-hosts with the co-most. I, I got to keep that around. I can't I can't let go of it. <laughs> okay. Charming to the last. It's Travis Grossman. <laughs> I try. <laughs> it's a two-man pod this week. We also have a very light week of news. Um, not a whole lot to Had to push back about. recording a bit. You know. Yeah. Yeah, no. I don't even think we're going to be that long. Travis, how was your week? Uh, Action-packed and sleep-deprived, baby. Uh, So Thursday night, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot came out, which I've only been able to think about four hours into total, which is a travesty. I'm expecting a review. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, One day when I finish it. But like so far, (laughs) it is exactly what I thought it would be, and it is exactly what I want. So what exactly is it? So have you heard of, or yeah, you probably haven't, the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games? I've heard of them. I know that they exist. Yeah. It's like the story (laughs) mode from those turned into a full-on, not quite a full action RPG, but like a lot of RPG elements where you're just playing, but you're just playing through the Dragon Ball story. A lot of the moments, uh, CC2 does a lot of like big cinematic like graphics okay. for their like cutscenes. So all the big moments in Dragon Ball are just made bigger, which I love. Like they've made some of my favorite moments in Naruto better, and so far they've made some of my favorite moments in Dragon Ball better. And I'm only done with the Saiyan saga, so wow, I am excited. I'm gonna get to the Boo saga and just start weeping. Is it? So is this is this like a fighter game like the other Dragon Balls? Like, no. Okay. It is all story. Okay. You you level up your characters. You progress through the main game. Um, there isn't like a versus mode anywhere. Okay. So I can see that turning a lot of people off, but like it is everything. No, as somebody learned. whose knowledge of Dragon Ball is based solely around the video games, I yeah, it's I I experienced Dragon Ball through the games. Like between the Team Four Star abridged and the games, that is how yeah I come to I came to understand Dragon Ball lore. I've not watched a whole lot of the actual show. It's a lot, but I've it is a lot. But I played um, shoot, what is the name? Um, it was what can you do in it? Like what's the one was just a very like straightforward fighter that was a lot of fun. And then the other one was like the one where you made your own Saiyan, that ultimate Tekenchi. Right? Ultimate Tenkaichi. Tenkaichi. Yeah. They, well, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, they throw around the Tenkaichi a lot because the, the tournament, they, I could go on for a while. I'm going to yeah. stop myself there. The point is, I know what Tenkaichi Wudakai means. Yeah. And that they, that's why they throw the word around a lot. Um, but yeah. Um, it's a great like if you haven't experienced Dragon Ball and you like video games, get pick this up. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what, what platforms is it on? PS4, Xbox, okay, PC. Do you you don't have a physical copy on the no. PlayStation? Okay, I might have to find a way to like get my hands on the Xbox version because I very much would like to play it and like yeah, actually. Do, I'm assuming you only play as Goku. No, you. Oh, yeah, you. Uh, a lot of characters are, are – I had that funny burp in the beginning and now I'm trying not to do it as much. Yeah. <laughs> um, you start as Goku. Um, some characters are only support, so they come in as part of your party. Um, but right now I've got Goku, Piccolo, Gohan that you can play as. I assume you get Vegeta. I hope. Actually, I, I know you get Vegeta because of Ma- the Majin Vegeta stuff. Um, probably get Trunks. Go tanks, maybe. So that's awesome. I look forward yeah. to hearing more about the game because it's. I remember. I remember seeing the announcement trailer. I was like, "This seems." It just looks so pretty. It looks beautiful, and it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, and then the next night uh, was the pre-release for Magic the Gathering Theros yeah. Beyond Death, which uh, they went back to the ancient Greece plane. It's one of my favorite planes. I placed second at the event. I felt pretty good about myself, so. But you play second. Yeah. Oh, damn. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. 
It was uh, quite a lot of fun. I found out, so um, Wizards of the Coast has recently started letting stores start their first pre-release Friday at 6 p.m. Yeah. I'm going to try to get off work and start going to those because uh, being out till 5 a.m. is not what it used to be, friend. <laughs> Especially when you're not, like, party... Getting too old with this sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I... My final game, I was, like, this dude was on it, and he was kind of being a jerk about it, but, like, I screwed up a trigger, and I, like, did a thing that I thought would do a thing, but it didn't. He was like, okay, so, like, he had a thing on my creature that was, like, sack a creature on your upkeep, but I thought it was sack this specific creature on your upkeep, like, well, yeah. I'll sack it to my other thing, and get this effect and he's like that's not how that trigger second works second to me second to me second to me second to me yeah um, so that's not how that works and I was like oh oh I read it wrong and usually at a pre-release they go yeah it's easy to take it back it's like everyone's playing with new cards it's whatever he's like please sack another creature and I was like dude you opened four mythics get off my ass <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. I still took a game off of him. Ah. I cut the, the like he was the Russian of the night. I cut the Russian. Yeah, he was the Russian of the night. <laughs> that is still one of my all-time favorite Schmodown moments. Is with I think was it Ken or no? Was it was Sam Witwer like missed a question yeah. during the Iron Man match with Ken Napsok. You know, he hears Josh McCuga really loudly. <laughs> the Russian is cut. <laughs> Which we need to find time to actually watch the draft. I know. Considering that the first match is Saturday. Oh my god. Yeah. Damn it. Uh Do you know what's up? it's where is it? Uh New York. So it's probably like seven ish. Our time. Yeah, you're working. Ye. We'll figure something out. Yeah. I wanna watch it with you, but if we can't it's yeah. I'll I give would, you the link to watch it yeah. once you get home. Yeah. Uh, How was your week? My week was uh, good. I went to the Toddies, which is the uh, like annual awards ceremony thing that the uh, theater I perform with does. <clears throat> um, got to hang out and party with a lot of my theater friends. It was a wonderful time. Sleepy Jerry. I may or may not have fallen asleep really early. <laughs> Like, the toddies ended around 10. We got back to the person's house around, like, 10.30-ish. And at, like, 1, I was out like a light. Okay, that's not as bad. Like... <laughs> yeah, I I saw the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you didn't see was the picture. It was because I fell asleep in, like, an armchair. Like, not, like, laying yeah. down. Like, yeah. After the video, so I'm, like, slunched back. Is that I was sleeping in such a weird position that my ass started to like slowly slide <laughs> down the couch, and because of that, my shirt got pulled up. So like my shirt's like up to my man breasts, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like sprawled out, like mouth like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> in the look but, at that, <laughs> look at what you did. <laughs> so it was it was a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we watched the we watched the Conor McGregor cowboy fight, which like <laughs> so like a bunch of the people were like, trying to figure out how to do it and like realizing that <clears throat> if you order if you like get the trial for ESPN Plus, you still have to pay for the fight regardless. That's dumb. So like That's... everyone's trying to find a way to do it, and then yeah, you know, shout out to Allison, wonderful, wonderful human being. She and her husband were just like to hell with it. We're watching the fight, and everybody wants to watch the fight. Um, and we watched, we watched like a good bit of the fights leading up to, it, and we all enjoyed them. Um, didn't like, didn't the fight last like twenty seconds? So yeah. And Michael Stanley, friend of the show. Um, <clears throat> this is before. Yeah. Yeah. Any stupidness happened? Any tomfoolery? Any tomfoolery? And I'll leave it at that. Um, he came from him. There was, he was like really loudly talking about like how much he wants Cowboy to win, but like knows Conor McGregor will win. And he was just really loud about his excitement for the fight. And the moment that kick landed, we all went, it's over. There's no <laughs> way he's getting back up. Like, because I don't know if you saw any of no, the fight. I just heard wh about what happened. So, so bell rings, they charge each other and immediately like lock up their arms. 
And Conor McGregor got into this position where he started punching Cowboy with his own shoulder. Like, he just hit, like, shoulder to the chin, shoulder to the chin, shoulder to the chin, shoulder to the chin. He breaks out of it and goes straight into this really hard turning kick and caught him, like, right at his night-night button. Like, it was, like, right on his jawline where that yeah. pressure point is. And then Cowboy, like, starts staggering backwards. And Connor immediately is, like, punching him on his way down. And, like, they, like, they called. And, like, right as he hit the ground. Must have thought he was a boss. Yeah. <laughs> but he goes down he calls they call the match and Conor McGregor immediately starts hugging him <coughs> it was just so funny like I wish I was recording Michael if I knew the, if I had like the precognition that the fight would last 20 yeah. seconds yeah and I if I knew that or even imagined that would happen because I know like I know um, there was a prize fight he had, Jose Aldo, I want to say the gentleman's name was, where the fight literally lasted five seconds. Like, the bell rang, and he just went, uppercut, done. <laughs> like, he just jawed the dude, and he, like, he took a nap. Yeah. He took a very aggressive, he, non-consensual nap. He beat him to sleep. He beat him to sleep, yeah. <laughs> uh so Conor McGregor has a history of doing that to people where <laughs> like the fight is very short. Um, and a lot of the people talking about it, Michael included, it's, you know, with Conor McGregor, it's always the same thing of like, if the fight is not over within the first three rounds, Conor McGregor will lose. Mm. But if you're still vertical for those first three rounds, you are in the danger zone <laughs> of like, there's a good chance he puts you on your behind. But it was a lot of fun. And I know uh, at some point this week, I'm trying to find time to go see Jojo Rabbit. Oh. Because the theater I work at... Finally has it? Yes, because we got all the Best Picture noms in. Ah. With the exception of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't think we have that one back in yet, but I know we have Joker. We never lost Ford v. Ferrari or Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Or we don't have Parasite, which yeah. really frustrates me. Yeah. Um, or like the Irishman or Marriage Story, like all the other stuff that like it's, it's never Netflix. came to our theater. Yeah. Um, but like had that limited release. So yeah, I'm on the warpath to getting through all of the uh, Best Picture nominations. Uh, Marriage Story uh, changed me as a person. Like I, that movie just hurt to watch in the best way. I've only seen the memes and like a clip on the Colbert show. It's really good. You'd like it. Yeah. You'd like it. It's a lot. It's one of those, like, you need to, like, be at, like, an emotion. You have to have, like, that emotional conversation with yourself before watching it of, like, I'm preparing to watch two very talented actors Acts. make, yeah like, do human things that hurt to watch. That's how I felt watching Whiplash. Yeah, that's a good like, comparison. Yeah. Like, we had to take breaks during Whiplash. Yeah, honestly, I took a break during Marriage Story. Like, mm -hmm. I just got to the point where, like... Like, I need, I need a minute. And everyone's amazing in it. Yeah. Like, obviously, like, everybody, you know, Adam Driver and ScarJo and Laura Dern have all been nominated for awards. Alan Alda, who I didn't realize was in the movie until I watched it, and he just, like, saunters on screen. I'm like, whoa! Oh, <laughs> on a minute. I love listening to Alan Alda talk, but that's whatever. Anyway, it's been ten mi about 15 minutes. We have some news to talk about, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe possibly. I'll let you take point. <laughs> so, um, mid recording of Knights of the Old Knights of the Nerd Republic. Yeah, not the video game. <laughs> mid recording of the video yeah, game mid. from two thousand two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we didn't make any reference to it because uh, we were someone else was talking, and I just like Jared, look at this shit. Um, but. We got an announcement that there's an Aquaman animated miniseries set at HBO, set for HBO Max with James Wan producing. So, and... So, the, the moral of the story is DC Universe is not going to be around in a year's time. Which is unfortunate because I just paid for a year of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when we talk about Crisis... Okay. There's... Some important stuff with that. Also, star, like totally unrelated, Stargirl is going to be a CW show. I thought it was a DC Universe show. 
Me too. But it's a CW show. That they changed. And it starts like soon. What? It's a. It, they're getting like their first season's a half season in the spring. My God. Yeah. <laughs> They're just absolutely... They don't know what's going on. They're just, they just throating um, DC Universe. <laughs> this is so pathetic. So, I feel so bad for everyone involved. As long as everything moves over, I'll get HBO Max. Like, yeah. Like, if I can watch Batman the Animated Series and Justice League whenever I want, I don't care. I totally and, do. I get that, too. Yeah. HBO Max is really pricey. It's like 13 bucks, right? I have such a hard time wanting to get anything when there, when Disney Plus is six ninety nine. Like that's the thing that just completely like yeah I know like makes my jaw drop every time is like just that incredible. Disney Plus has them beat on movies, but TV, if it literally just becomes DC Universe plus Lift. the entire like catalog of what Warner Brothers has to offer, yeah. I think HBO Max might have Disney Plus beat for TV. I think at least for now. Once we get more, Star at least for stuff. now. But yeah, like once Cassian, Kenobi, um, what, Falcon, Falcon Winter and Winter Soldier, Soldier yeah, WandaVision. The big once ones. those all start up, there's gonna like, yeah. and then we're gonna have the same issue that everybody has with movies. We're like, oh, every movie out is a superhero movie. Every TV, TV show, show everyone's talking about is gonna be a superhero show. You're goddamn right. <laughs> um, this Aquaman show is apparently going. Apparently, like I think it's supposed to follow DCEU Aquaman. Yeah, and like right immediately after Aquaman won him, like his first days as the king. From what I understand. Yeah. From this. Uh, yeah. From the yeah, the Variety right, article cool. reads: King of Atlantis will begin with Aquaman's first day on the job as King of Atlantis. Luckily, he has uh, his two royal advisors to back him up. Uh, Volko, uh, Willem Dafoe's character, and Mera, uh, the water controlling warrior princess. D uh, between dealing with unscrupulous surface dwellers, ev uh, elder evils from beyond time, from beyond time, and his own half brother who wants to overthrow him. Okay, well then maybe this is its own thing, because if Orm is still trying to overthrow him, and like Orm well, kind of Orm kind of begins his redemption arc at the end of Aquaman. Yeah. He's, he's defeated and then there's like the whole where his mother comes out and it's like you're both equally my sons quit being douchebags. Yeah, but Orm, Orm is always a bad guy though. Like Yeah. He's he's like the go besides Black Manta he's like the go to yeah. villain. It's Robert Orm Man. and Manta. Yeah. yeah. So. We'll see. I you know. Who knows what's going on with, honestly. This is just insane. I don't <laughs> every yeah. week there's like a really weird new DC <laughs> announcement. Dude, you're not even ready for what I'm about to talk about with Crisis. I later. am so ready for Crisis. Um but before that, I remember getting giddy when I saw that gif online of like Brendan Routh and like the only way I can describe it is like the redeemed Superman suit. Yeah. Or like now it's yellow instead of like the kingdom come black. Yeah. And just, oh, it made my heart happy. We didn't get enough Brandon Routh. Like, we got a good bit. We didn't get enough in the end. Um, but in exchange, we got a lot of John Cryer, Lex Luthor, which I adore. Yes. So. Twitter buddy of yours. <laughs> you liked my tweet? Did you, I tell, uh, you see um, Kaysen got a tweet liked by Mark Hamill? Not. I got to join the club. You have to join the club. Mark, like my tweet. Yeah, I I don't know which one. Like my one about uh, men being quivering sacks of knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I'm a, gonna retweet that and just be like at the real Mark Hamill. Like this, my friend really wants you to know about men being quivering sacks of knees. It was for re for uh, reference sake. Apparently, it's a line. It's like an offshoot of a line from a Castlevania game. That's like, what is a man but a heaping pile of lies i don't know the exact line i don't really care we were taught like we're shooting because we were trying to remember it at a yeah. lunch table at work and uh it like it was like quivering sack of uh, quivering sack of lies no that's not it heaping sack of lies no and somewhere in there i thought i heard somebody say what is a man but a quivering sack of knees and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I, it's, it goes, it's on brand for your knee obsession. And you're like harvesting of knees. Oh yeah, I'm going to harvest your kneecaps. Yeah, one of my favorites. 
Anyway, Bradley Cooper in the editing of Joker. Yeah, There's so no Bradley, good segue. Yeah, yeah. Bradley Cooper, he's one of the producers on Joker because he and Todd Phillips are buddies from his hangover days. Um, it turns out that Bradley Cooper, uh, like we said, you know, of Hangover, A Star is Born, and Guardians of the Galaxy fame, uh, played a very pivotal role in the editing room. Jeff Groth was recently nominated for an Academy Award for his work uh, editing. He recently spoke about the impact Cooper had on the finished product. And then here's the direct quote. We kept this one pretty close to us. We screened it more personally for people and filmmakers. Uh, Cooper definitely came in a couple of times. He was a producer on the movie, but he definitely watched the movie many times and sat with us. We could call him if we got stuck with something. We were like, hey, can you come over and take a look at this? Uh, Groth praised Cooper's... Uh, P Groth praised Cooper's keen eye, explaining how the director and actor helped contribute to Joker. He doesn't miss a thing. He would watch stuff and he would pick out even some of the smallest things and uh, what are the things that can be picked out for us to address. He was definitely a huge help. I think he, I got a lot more experience in editing than most people would realize. Uh, I think people... I think he probably I think probably he was in the edit room more than any other actor that I've worked with, which is funny considering he wasn't in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that we know of. Yeah. Uh, what was interesting to have him come in was that he could always be looking uh, to get the feeling from what was on screen to mimic the feeling that he had on the day he shot it. Uh, it was a really interesting perspective. Oh, wait. No, never mind. He also revealed that Joaquin Phoenix added it in the editing room. Never mind. He's referring to Joaquin um apologies i didn't see that paragraph uh it was a really interesting perspective to have in the room of course you're putting uh together what you're putting you're putting together what you're putting together <laughs> but uh then to have somebody uh saying like i live that moment and here's what i'm feeling it's another interesting perspective so kudos to todd for having him come in so i i love i think editing is one of those things when it comes to film that people do not understand how crucial it is like, yeah people yeah. people notice uh, g great editing and they also notice very bad editing but i don't think people realize like the way that the way a film is cut together passively makes <laughs> you feel a certain way yeah um so it's, it's interesting stuff this is these are those things that i love to hear you know, that's right up there with the story about how it was Endgame's editor like that, came up with the that Iron, found the, Iron Man line. Yeah. It's stuff like that that I absolutely love hearing about. And it's always in the edit. It's almost always in the edit that these little things happen that alter. Um, I think it's very wise to have Joaquin Phoenix in the room. Oh, yeah. Um, with how emotionally charged Joker is as a movie to have that like – With how intense his performance is and like – how close him and Phillips worked on the project. I yeah. think that just makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I just I, – I, I like the openness happening here. Um, you know, you go mark your calendars. I'm saying nice things about Joker. <laughs> but – Happy Martin Luther King Day, by the way. Yeah, happy Martin Luther King Day. I keep forgetting today's Monday. It does not feel like a Monday. Well, for the people listening, it's not. But uh, Yeah, 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 obviously. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting story. You know, I – I do legitimately want to pick up the, at the very least, to rent, like, a home release copy of Joker. Because I do want to listen to the audio commentary. Like, as much as I'm going to want to put my head through a wall listening to Todd Phillips, like, kind of verbally yeah. flagellate himself, I don't want... By the same token, I do want to peek into what happened in the making of this movie. Like, I legitimately do want to know. Yeah. There's a part of me that wants to pick up a copy just to have it, because, like... I want to watch it again. Yeah. And it's one like it, it's not going to be on any streaming services probably. So. For a while. At the very – it'll probably be like a flagship one for HBO Max. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Because I know they like to get DC movies on HBO period as soon as they can. Yeah, that's how we watched uh, – that's how Joel and I watched Shazam. Yeah, it that's was, right. It was free on Amazon if you had HBO. It was very weird. Yeah. Um. But yeah, cool stuff. It's really, um, really interesting, and I always forget that like Bradley Cooper was involved with Joker. Yeah. Like, until the credits rolled, I was like, "Hot damn, <laughs> Rocket Raccoon was involved for all of this." <laughs> you got to take this uh, story. It's your boy. I do. It's your boy. 
Uh, we got some word on the Green Lantern series coming to HBO Max. Headed by Greg Berlanti. Um, Live action, inexplicably. Yeah, well, crisis talk later. Um, oh. So, it's going... What? We'll get there. <laughs> the, the last couple shots of crisis are so, like, for someone like me that's so engrossed in DC television, were so, like, mind-boggling that, like, it was a lot to take in. So... Okay. Um, quote from... I believe this is a direct quote from Berlanti, but I could be wrong. This is in the Deadline article. Uh, it's going to span several decades and focus on two stories about Green Lanterns on Earth as well as one in space. Uh, it's going into the Sinestro story... Assuming that means Sinestro is changing, yeah. changing from green to yellow lantern or founding the Sinestro core, you know, whichever era uh, you want to refer to yeah. that. Yeah. And, uh, that's all we got, but it'll be cool to see, like the fact that we have Sinestro means that we know we're in some way, shape or form going to have Hal there. Yeah. I wouldn't mind this. There's a couple, there's a green lantern movie. Animated movie. Yeah. That's... Well, we know there's a Green Lantern movie. Shut up. There's a couple of Green Lantern <laughs> animated movies starring Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan. One tells the story of him becoming Green Lantern. Yeah. The other is they have a new recruit. And, like, as she's meeting other Lanterns for the first time... Is it, like, Jess Cruz? It's not Jessica Cruz. It's a it's an it's a girl, but it's an alien. She's not human. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I thought I was assuming it like, was an Earth. Person. She she meets Kilowog for the first time, and you get the like. Then it cuts to a story of Kilowog in boot camp for the Lantern Corps. Oh, and then you cuts like you get a story of Sinestro doing archaeology, and you get like it's so cool. You get so much background on different Lantern Corps members, and like while they're trying to stop this galactic threat, it's it's a really good animated movie. Uh, it's on DC Universe, in fact. <laughs> it's where I watched it. Um, but if I can get something like that, where it's just like stories of random lanterns in the core, that'd be I'd be down with that. Yeah, that'd be a very interesting premise. I know, like the way anything Green Lantern has ever pitch ever pitched, it, it comes with that like okay. It's law and order, but in space. Yeah, it's, it's space cops. <laughs> it's space cops. And, like, I don't know. I think I would like something a little bit more personal. Like that. Yeah. Like, if you focus on the core in space, it becomes space cops. If you're on Earth, it's no fun. Don't do it on Earth. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Unless, unless it's like a this giant, this, like, army or whatever has come to Earth. Yeah. You do something like that, but I agree. Keep it as as in space as possible, because um, that that avoids the issue of like the universe feeling small. Um, so I think it's a safe bet to say Howell is one of the lanterns involved, especially if Sinestro is involved here. Yeah. Um, and because it says several probably, decades, it's probably going to like cover the Sinestro story and then maybe cut to later, where now he's heading the Sinestro core, and maybe you have more of the Earth lanterns. Um. I have a feeling this is going to be Hal and John. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. Eventually, I want to see like Guy and Kyle Rayner. Well, if they do it in the right, if they do it in proper order, though, they'll get they'll do Hal and Guy. Oh, that's right. I always forget that Guy came before John. Mm -hmm. A lot. Well, I think the Green Lantern books forgot that the Guy came, before. <laughs> but Guy, like I, I was never a big fan of Guy until we got Red Lantern Guy. With a mullet and handlebar mustache, and then I was like, "Okay, Guy Gardner is he's cool." <laughs> they, like they they found what he was meant to do. Um, <laughs> my favorite Guy Gardner moment of all time is in Young Justice yeah. in season one when they're pitching new members for the Justice League, and Hal and John are on the council. And yeah. Uh, Barry brings up well there's Earth has another Green Lantern his name is Guy Gardner and they both in unison just go no <laughs> but no <laughs> I remember that I remember laughing very hard at that that's good uh, yeah I'm excited for, I'm again I'm excited for this this is one of those like I have no idea what the hell is gonna happen <laughs> like this I is don't such think a they do either like this is such a shot in the dark yeah and I'm so ready for it and, like, I'm not necessarily expecting it to fail. I'm expecting it... 
I don't want it. To, I don't expecting it to fail. I'm expecting it to be not connecting to any other continuity. I'm and everyone immediately going, "Is it connected to Titans? Is it connected to the CW verse? Is it?" I, my okay. My biggest thing, just looking at this, is I'm not expecting it to like outright fail. And on that, I mean either be poorly made or just be plain old bad. Yeah. I'm expecting part of this to not work. Like I'm expecting something here to just not be compatible with like something else. Yeah. Like there's just I, like again, I'm trying to wrap my mind around Green Lantern on a TV budget. And granted, it's HBO. So like again, like it's still, it was a hunt. Like like we're talking hundred million dollars an episode for Game of Thrones. But like, how do you take how do you take that chance? How do you expect this to perform, like... Especially, like, we just said you're doing a Green Lantern show. Keep it in space. On a TV TV budget. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And granted, there are shows that do space. But because this is in the first wave of, like, the streaming shows, how much are they willing to risk on one season? That's the thing that is just boggling my mind. Like, how much are you willing to to roll the dice... On what, on what could very well be one season of television. You know, like, I yeah. remember everybody, like, their jaws hitting the floor when The Mandalorian was announced. And Disney outright said, we are giving this a Game of Thrones budget. Where, like, every single episode is a small film. As far as the budget is concerned, like, this is a, like, this is a low-tier movie every single episode. Yeah. And Game of Thrones had to the comfort comfort to do that and disney has the money and the fact that it's freaking star wars and the first live action star wars television show to just be like yeah we're gonna take a chance on the mandalorian this is different like i this is i'm just we've seen enough live action dc television at this point to know that it's either going to be a like niche cult following slam dunk or god awful yeah (laughs) you know like can't animate a tiger god off. <laughs> Speaking of which, Crisis on Infinite Earths wrapped last week. Actually, the exactly a week ago. If you're listening to this today, it comes out. So, with this little recap, can you? Because there's a very real fact that uh, you began this crossover on a different show than you're ending it. So, yeah. like the Reader's Digest of this story. So if you know the comic, it follows a surprising number of plot points. Okay. Um, the – so on The Flash, the newest Harrison Wells, Nash, accidentally – in trying to hunt down the monitor, accidentally releases the anti-monitor. Okay. And becomes pariah. Who is you know, doomed his world and now is destined to watch as tragedy strikes other worlds. Um, <clears throat> Lila, uh, John's wife Lila on Arrow turns out to be the Harbinger. Okay. Who, her name in the comics is Lila, so it, yeah, you know, it, fits. It's, it, it lines up. Um, who is the Monitor's like aide. Crucial plot point. She gets taken over by the Anti-Monitor. And kills the monitor. Yes. So we keep that. Um, the So they gather together and they're like, okay, Earths are being destroyed and we need to stop it. And um, as they're doing – in the first episode, Oliver Queen dies. And they're like, oh, God, what do we do? So, like, it's, a group goes to Lazarus Pit Oliver while they're still trying to, like, save some Earths uh, and find the seven Paragons. This is not from the comics. This is just, like, they wanted to designate seven people as, like, the go-tos. Or line up to stop, yeah. um, I almost said Dark Side. To stop the, the anti-monitor. Monitor. Yeah. Which turns out to be Supergirl, Batwoman, The Flash, Ma- Martian Manhunter, Kingdom Come Superman... Ryan Chow. Okay. Who is I don't remember if that's the act, the the actor's name or the character's name. Give me a minute. Um 
a lot of people to keep up with. Yeah. Hold on, Ryan. So the actor? No. Nope. It's the character. Okay. Uh, he's a different Adam. So he's going to take over for uh, Ray Palmer as the Adam. Oh, and okay. Yeah, he doesn't, yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't in the crossover. Notably. I knew that um, name sounded familiar. I'm trying to think like uh, – because I remember in Injustice 2 that everybody was like making a stink over like why isn't it yeah. Ray as the Adam. Um, sorry. I'm picking at a thing on my hand because I nick my hands a lot at work. <laughs> um, so I say Supergirl, Superman, Batwoman, Flash, Martian Manhunter, Ryan Chow. I'm missing one. Um, White Canary. Okay. Sarah Lance. In other words, our leads from all the shows that uh, ex- bar Martian Manhunter, Ryan Chow, except yeah. for Oliver because he's dead for the time being. So a, a team goes to – That is the most DC – like DC set crossover phrase I've ever heard in my life. Just with the exception of Green Arrow because he's dead at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so they, that robot chicken bit. Yeah. Where like Batman has an existential crisis at Green Arrow's funeral. He's like, this is the fifth time we've buried him. Yeah. Somehow he's going to get resurrected or we're going to find one from another earth where we're all dead. None of this matters. Why do we – he's like, I'm not even going to start – I'm going to stop showing up to these things. And then they cut to the audience and Oliver's clapping for him. (laughs) Yeah. So we have – a team go to revive Oliver. They Lazarus pit Oliver. They can't uh, – Constantine uh, – uh, Constantine can't get his soul Daddy. back. Daddy. No. <laughs> Constantine can't get his soul back. So they have to go to Earth 666 to find Lucifer. That's Daddy. And no. <laughs> have you seen him? Have you seen John Constantine? Oh, honey. We got to have a talk later. <laughs> so – um, they go to – they meet up with Lucifer. They're like, hey, give us a passport to uh, purgatory. They go to purgatory. They find Oliver. They could like – they calm Oliver down from his like, you know, the violent yeah, killer Oliver. The Lazarus from, pit. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And they're like, OK, we're going to bring your soul back to your body. And then the specter shows up and he's like, hey, Oliver, come be important to the plot for a minute and be the specter. <laughs> so I saw jokes about like, you know, Oliver's the specter now. And I, like, didn't understand what I was looking at. Like, they, did they actually turn him into the Spectre? Yes. What the hell? Because, the, well, in Christ on Infinite Earth, the Spectre is yeah. what, you know, sparks the new multiverse. And rather than have it be, they have someone playing the Spectre. Yeah. Like, in Purgatory. But he comes to Oliver and he's like, hey, you're going to be me now. And you're going to do this. Only so that Stephen Amell can be, like... Uh, integral to the plot, which is fine. Yeah. You know, like, what is, gr- granted, what is Ryan Chow without an Adam suit going to do with the final battle? But, like, what is Green Lantern yeah. going to do? Um, so eventually all the Earths get destroyed. Um, Did you say Green Lantern and Green Arrow? I, I probably said Green Lantern and then Green Arrow. Because <laughs> Green Lantern could do a lot. Green Lantern would be very handy. <laughs> it's a shame we don't have any of those yet. Yeah. Um, so all the Earths get destroyed. The seven Paragons are the only ones left. They are sent to this like timeless place from um, Legends. Okay. The first season of Legends, that like place that has no like, time doesn't pass or whatever, and they're stuck there for a couple months. Oh, this is the the in between. That's where it that's it stops. Is the Paragons are on that timeless place. And then they oh, want a holiday a, break. Yeah. Also, um, John, Les- John Wesley Ship's Barry Allen Flash dies in the very classic destroying yeah. the antimatter gun, um, which I called because I knew they wouldn't. They couldn't because they, they had a whole kill Grant. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did the Superman twist happen up to this point? Yeah. So they land in that place. Brandon Routh kind of vanishes. His cape remains, and we instead of getting the classic. Uh, Clark holding Kara it's Kara holding his cape nice you know nice um, but instead of Brandon Routh's Kingdom Come Superman we get Lex Luthor because he rewrote like, in the Book of Destiny yeah because we have to call it the Book of Destiny 
<laughs> uh, he wrote, he did a lot of changing, which I'll get to in a minute. Oh. Uh, he gave himself some superpowers. Fun. Uh, so they find out. Stephen Amell, Spectre Stephen Amell shows up and is like, okay, Barry, I'm going to take a kickstart you. I'm going to shoot you into the speed force because there's nowhere else for you to go. Um, and some people are going to be spit out. So the, the way – again, this is pretty similar to the comics. The monitor wants to invent time travel. He accidentally goes to the start of time and kickstarts uh, the anti-monitor and – that's how we get this, like, you know, yeah. equal and opposite reaction kind of thing. Um, I heard David Diggs' voice in my head when you said that. Good. Um, so a team goes to stop that, and then a team goes to the beginning of time to uh-huh. fight the anti-monitor. They get lost in the speed force. It's cut in this very, like, wide shot cinematic style, which was off-putting. Yeah. And I didn't understand why. Um, But that's where we get the Ezra Miller Flash cameo is in the Speed Force, which it's very fun. It's him and Grant. Yeah. You're Barry Allen. I'm Barry Allen. uh, I love the fact that Ezra Miller's Flash has not been dubbed the Flash yet. Yeah. Like, that's how early he is. That's what they call me. (laughs) Yeah. And, like... I, I, like as he's vanishing away in that scene, the last thing you hear him say is, "I told Vic this was possible." Yeah, which like I just want, I like him. I like Ezra Miller. Hopefully that movie comes out. Maybe one day. <laughs> it's just that's what I love about DC stuff is that like, there's no, like especially anymore. They're just like, yeah, everyone's in everything. Have fun. You yeah, know? I love it, mm. and I love Sprite. Sponsor us. Yes, please, Coca-Cola. Um, so. <laughs> I want an excuse to unironically at Christmas time be like, do you want a Sprite cranberry? cranberry? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a Sprite cranberry? <laughs> um, so they gather everybody up. We have a couple nice scenes between Grant and Steven in the Speed Force. Steven gives Grant the run, Barry run of the crossover, which I thought was very nice. Yeah. They all end up at the beginning of... They stop the monitor. I'm trying to think. They stop the monitor. They go to the... Thinking that that would stop the crisis because if the monitor never travels in time, he never wakes up the anti-monitor. The crisis never starts. But there's always a time a version of the timeline. There's always a monitor that time travels. So they have to fight the anti-monitor anyway. Okay. So while, while the paragons are fighting shadow demons, uh, so the specter... <laughs> Gets into like a Dragon Ball Z arm lock oh with God. the anti monitor where he lights and like he just sparks up a new multiverse, which is basically what happens in the yeah. comic. Like they, they start like, a new universe. Like Spectre Oliver does. Yeah. In the process, he like officially finally dies. Um, they wake up again, very much like Infinite, uh, Christ on Infinite Earths. The Paragons wake up and don't, like, remember everything. Everybody else is living in this new reality. Yeah. Where all of the existing CW shows are happening on the same Earth. So now Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Batwoman, Black Lightning. That's it. Because DC Legends is, like, hopping all over the place. Yeah. In the timeline. But those five now all happen on Earth it's Prime. It's always been part of that timeline anyway. Yeah. So. But they are all on Earth Prime now. And like, which is jarring to Kara and Barry because like, it, Kara wakes up and is like, remembers everything um, and uh, what's her name? Her sister. Oh my God, I'm forgetting her sister's name. Oh my God. <laughs> um. Alex, oh my god. <laughs> Take away my fan card. Um, Alex doesn't remember anything. Kara gets a call about she's late for a thing, an awarding of a Nobel Prize, so she zips over there. And guess who's being awarded the Nobel Prize? Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. <laughs> guess who now owns the DEO? 
Lex Luthor. <laughs> and Luthor Industries. Um, so that's where Supergirl ends up. Um, they have one last fight with the Anti-Monitor. Ryan, y- Ryan's doctorate work is based on Ray Palmer's doctorate work. So he helps Ray build a thing so, like, they make the anti-monitor shrink forever. Oh. Like, he just can't stop shrinking. Um, the kids are back in the future. The kid from Arrow, the future kids, like Mia, yeah. uh, William, and Connor are all back in the future. Um, trying to think what else is, like, hard-changed. At the end. So I'm assuming that Brandon Routh, like Superman Returns Superman, is like still his own a Earth. different Earth. Yeah, still his okay, own yeah, Earth. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Because Tyler, how do you say, Hulk, Hulk? Uh, Ty- Tyler Hoechlin. Hoechlin, oh jeez. Ho- Hoechlin or Hecklin? It's one of I think two. you arrived at Hoechlin. He, he has it, like in his Twitter bio, it says how to pronounce it. I think you said that it's Hoechlin. Yeah. I mean, so, so like, because I know he's... Permanent. He's yeah, he, because and he's, he's a part of Super, and he's getting his own show. He's getting his own show. Yeah. Also, that was another thing. He now has two kids. Oh, so it's not just one Super Son; it's two. Uh, I'm still super excited about that show. I'm so excited for you. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, John has a daughter again. John Diggle. Yeah. Because he had a daughter, Flashpoint. He had a son. Now he has both. <laughs> Now he has both. Now he has both. Um, everyone's kind of come to terms with the fact that Oliver Queen is officially dead. And then the last couple episodes of Arrow, I think, are going to be setting up Green Arrow and the Canaries. Okay. Which starts next season. Or might have a spring season, like a spring half season. I don't yeah. know yet. Because the last couple shots we get are of the New Earths created in this multiverse one of them having star girl who's apparently going to be a cw show one of them of a lantern core what yeah like on oa power battery guardians the bit it's very it's a very big wide shot you can't pick anybody out at least not immediately but it's clearly <laughs> oa yeah like they're bowing they're bowing to a power battery in oh, uniform wow that's right up there with that random Green Lantern that shows up in Justice League. Uh-huh. That it's just like, oh, we're so close. Just pull the trigger. Please. <laughs> um, we see Brandon Routh's Earth, and he has the the yellow S. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the... Before I get to the big, big one for me. <clears throat> no, I think that's it. Like, I already said Stargirl. Yeah. What's the big one? All three DC Universe shows, so Titans, Swamp Thing, and Doom Patrol, now have their own Earths. What? They are all on different Earths. (laughs) Which I... (laughs) Which would be fine if Doom Patrol didn't show up in Titans. They can't stop. <laughs> they can't. They can't just. They can't stop. They just keep screwing up. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard to keep myself under control. You have no idea. I know. And I, Levi isn't even here to appreciate it. I know. But oh my god! <laughs> Since Titans came up, you get one. Fuck them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. On the whole, how did we like Crisis? I really enjoyed it. Yeah? That's yeah. good. That's I good. My favorite, <laughs> I sent it into our group chat, but uh, the showrunner was talking about, not Berlanti, I forget who the other showrunner was, but he does all the crossover stuff, and he was yeah. like, I hate the comparisons to Endgame because we were working on Endgame's catering budget. Yeah, I saw and, like, that. That was really funny. I was just like, oh, dude. I I feel that because like they could have in the beginning of it there was very much this like lack of time like, yeah you, there was no pressing like 
There ten- wasn't a shot clock. Yeah. Well, there there kind of was, but there was no tension because it was inconsistent. It was like, yeah. and suddenly there's five Earths, and suddenly there's three Earths, and now everything like it it was just so rapid, you know. And yeah. They had a lot to. They could have done a whole like thirteen episode season of Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, but. I think for what they had, and they paid a lot of good. Oh my god! Oh my god! I gotta tell you the best part. <laughs> so Specter Oliver is locked up with the Anti Monitor, surrounded in like a ring of fire. What do you think he says to the Anti Monitor? If you had to pick out a line, you have failed this multiverse. You have failed this universe. <laughs> I I couldn't even be mad. I was laughing so hard when in the like in the in the fifth episode where they're like waking up in the new earth. Of course they did. Yeah. Of course they did. They have no self control. In the fifth episode where they're all waking up and uh, Sarah, because it's the legends kickoff for the season. Yeah. So it's very centered around Sarah. Uh, Sarah goes to the cave and is like, we need to find Oliver. Like, he's out there. He has to be. It's Because, uh, oh, yeah, the entire reason Martian Manhunter is a uh, is a paragon is so that he so he can remember, so he can, like, m- make everybody else in the main cast of every show remember <laughs> what happened. Naturally. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how. I forgot the biggest ending scene. We have a Justice League. They don't call themselves the Justice League. But we have a Justice League in the Hall of Justice. Wow. With a memorial to Oliver in it. That's amazing. It was very sweet. That's crazy. It was very sweet. I like that scene a lot. Um, Now let's actually just put Batman in here. (laughs) No. (laughs) Because then we'll start watching. (laughs) Um, But no, anyway, so they're in the, they're in the, uh, the Arrow Cave and... The bunker, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I know what it is. I know what it is. Yeah, so does the CW. <laughs> it just needs a giant nickel in it. A giant nickel and a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it's not Batman. See, it's a different coin. And a different dinosaur. And a different dino. <clears throat> um, but like... She's explaining to them what happened, and she she says it. She says he became something else. I love it. I, I love it. I love everything about the CW. <laughs> and um, I have new episodes of Supergirl and Batwoman to watch tomorrow. Well, they came out Sunday night. I'm going to watch them tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, exciting stuff. I I really enjoyed Crisis. I thought I'm it glad was glad you did. It was. As well put together as it could be, um, having followed John Cryer on Twitter, I discovered that they were still like editing and dubbing stuff in the break. I figured they would like be, yeah. that's that's how on the wire they were with this stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited to see where all this goes. So, to more. Television. I'll, we'll do like recaps of the seasons at the end of the season. Yeah. Like we'll just have a big episode of like breaking down. It's essentially show. its own yeah. season of something. So, well, that's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Was good. Happy to hear that. I'm trying to get back to the notes to see what the next story is. The one we don't have anyone for. Oh. Um. So, Travis and I are not well-versed in uh, Lord of the Rings lore. I have seen the Hobbit movies and played Shadow of Mordor and the opening of Shadow of War. So, what we're going to do is the cast for the Lord of the Rings show has been announced. Since you guys can access the show notes through the website, go ahead and read the cast list. And whenever we have Joel or Spencer or Connor or Mike on hand for an episode of Teen App, they can get into the nitty gritty of the casting and everything. Um, I look forward to watching this show, but I am in no I am no way, shape, or form an authority who has any. My opinion is useless on this, so uh, 
stay tuned for whenever we have people who are more knowledgeable on this. However, if you are knowledgeable on this and you want to find out for yourself, uh, go to the show notes and follow the link and you can weigh in on our social medias and tell us what you guys think. Show notes are on the website, uh, yeah. the nerd Academy podcast.com dot com. I st- it feels so good to say dot com. It's such a stupid little thing, but it makes me so happy that it is a dot com. Still mm. want, I still wanted it to be dot ninja. <laughs> Do you remember when that was a selling point for domain companies? No, I don't. Like that, was... that is the de- that is like because you're like two years older than me. Yeah, <laughs> you have that like there was little a... that slight edge of like. Do you remember this insane thing? Yeah, there, I I think it was Squarespace. <laughs> I want to say it was like Square. It was Squarespace or like a Squarespace competitor. That their whole thing was like... Sounds like some stupid shit GoDaddy would have done. Probably. It might have been Go... No, it wasn't GoDaddy. I know it wasn't GoDaddy. Because it was like proper sponsor... Like this was back in the first wave of like, hey, I'm going to get a sponsor for my channel instead of running AdSense the whole time. Yeah. And um, yeah, the whole whole bit was you could get like dot whatever for your domain. And so the big one, they were like, you can get something as crazy as dot ninja. Come on, come here. (laughs) concept of ninjas they were just like trying I'm to sure hold out like this... a bowl of candy you know just like it's not ninja come here it's like right up there with like the absurdity of like that that era of online humor <clears throat> where like the concept of the name bob was funny it's still kind of funny do you like do you remember no. like, like 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 you could just say oh hey his name's bob and that's the joke no actually i i do i do remember it and i hated it but alas, we are not there anymore. Uh, Travis, this is a very you heavy episode, but these are all mostly stories that you are in authority on. And I'm just I will that happily pass the buck to you. I'm just that important. You uh, are very important. We got sad news, uh, I believe, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, this is when the story broke. Um, uh, that's the afternoon at the time of recording. Bryce Armstrong, voice of Captain Ginyu and narrator for the original dragon ball has passed away due to natural causes at 84 years old um dragon ball is my favorite franchise of all time and i think for p like i know like z dragon ball z is the one everyone in america knows everyone like in the west and people ask me all the time if i think it's worth watching now and i think it is but like if you want something that's like half the size a little more fun. It's not, you know, the yelling and the powering up. Yeah. Um, the original Dragon Ball is such a building block of what anime is today, and I think everyone would be doing themselves a favor by watching it. So, and the dub is fantastic. Like, genuinely, every like they, everything about it is phenomenal. Um. So I will definitely be going home at some point this week and watching some old Dragon Ball episodes. Yeah, I uh, so was he the original voice in the sub or the dub? Dub, uh, yeah. So like yeah. this is like the English speaking Captain Ginyu. His name is Bryce. Bryce, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all, yeah. That's fair. I'll do the sidebar. The day Mouse and Zawa dies, I'm taking a week off of work and school, crying in my room to like eating like pints of ice cream, you know, six yeah. at a time. I'm gonna be a mess. Nobody can talk to me the day Mark Hamill goes. Oh, yeah. No, don't. Nobody. Don't come near me. Don't come near me. <laughs> you will get hit. <laughs> In the name of Mark Hamill, yeah. you will be punched. But, no, it is very, very sad news. Um, there's been an outpouring of support for him and uh, for his family, so... Uh, yeah, keep him in your thoughts. Uh, rest in peace. He definitely added to a huge... Uh, touchstone of pop culture uh in general movie news which i'm happy we can cover uh whenever there's big stories that aren't like too niche uh the mouse i love the the first line of this variety article the mouse has officially killed the fox Uh, (laughs) the mouse uh those of you who listen to us during our uh do back discussion in all of heroes days um there's a phrase that involves the mouse that we are trying to that involves a word we're trying to avoid using, and mouse fornicator. More <laughs> fornicator. 
We were accused of being mouse fornicators uh, by uh, some very angry members of the fandom menace at one point. And uh, it's just a term that I've always loved. So (laughs) Disney is dropping the word Fox from all of the Fox properties and studios that they bought. So Fox Searchlight is now uh, Searchlight Pictures. Okay. And um, 20th Century Fox is now going to be 20th Century Studios. Uh, There is a precedent for this. Uh, From what I understand, that was the original name of those of uh, 21st Century Fox's name originally was just 21st Century Productions. Uh, So... It's a blast to the past, but it's also Disney very much asserting its dominance over the properties it's bought. Um, We're getting to the end of the slate of movies that Fox was able to put into the world before the buyout happened. So it makes sense that they're starting to be like, okay, Fox is done. This is us now. Um, I don't... And I know we talked about it before. We're like... You know, the whole Disney buyout is something that is, like, very ugly and unfortunate, but that, like, a lot of nerds and film fans, that there are certain aspects of it that people can rejoice in. Yeah. That, like, it's, because, it, because it's this it's this inevitable act that, like, the only thing a lot of people can do is just go, well, this sucks, but, like, at least I'll get a good Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. Because there's nothing else I can do here. Um. This just makes it feel a whole lot more real and icky. Yeah. The fact that, like, we're wiping Fox, 21st Century Fox. It's like, it's like Thanos snapping it away. We're both hiccuping aggressively at yeah. this point. Um, so it's, it's interesting, and it's just going to be one of those very strange. I know a lot of people were like, ooh, now that Disney bought Fox, like, the Star Wars movies will start with the Fox fanfare again. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Disney is not letting them then into that room ever again, clearly. So, yeah. Moving right along, uh, it is award season here at the Nerd Academy Productions, as you guys know. Uh, we I mean, it is for everybody, but we're covering it. Nope, closely. just us. Just us. Just us. So, we held our first annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the world of nerddom, uh, did see some awards come through. Uh, Avengers Endgame won Best Action Ensemble, uh, for a film. Game of Thrones won Best Action Ensemble for television. And, uh, at this point, it is a guarantee that Joaquin Phoenix is going to win the joke, win the Oscar. Uh, what, I want to, so when, when are the Oscars? February. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. But like, what day in February? I don't <laughs> Hey, Google, when are the Oscars? February 9th. Thank you. I I know I can't. I want to be there with you just in case on the off chance. Oh, my God. I will, I will riot Here's, if Joker wins Best Picture. No, 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 no. I want to be there when they La La Land and they... <laughs> Not even for what you think. I want them to do it with. Jo- I want them to do it with Joker too. Think they'd be funny. I want them to say "Walking Phoenix." Pause and go. Oh wait, we meant Adam Driver. <laughs> oh no, I would not want that. Cause did you see his acceptance speech at the SAG Awards? Uh, Walkings. No. So almost every speech he's given. This, and that's, that's not to shoot at Walking Phoenix. I also just want Adam Driver to win. Oh yeah, yeah. For you. Me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, <clears throat> I legitimately it's between those two. Yeah. Unironically, like 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 in all fairness, like I think they are equals in like how intense their performances were in both Marriage Story and Joker. That said, Joaquin's uh, speech every for each time he's won this best actor award for Joker, it has been him being very 
gracious and either taking his time to like talk about something important or taking his time to like sing the praises of the people around him. And for his acceptance speech at the SAG Awards uh, Sunday night, uh, he basically was like, I've spoken my piece on this for the most part and started like singing the praises of everybody else who was nominated. Aw. And he was like, Leo, you've kept me on my toes for the past 30 years and have stolen so many jobs from me. I love you for it. Christian Bale, can you please just be bad in a movie one time? Um, he was talking to him. He's like, he's like, Adam, you bring such like a nuanced, impassioned, just personality to all your roles. Like you're, he's, you know, and um, DiCaprio, DiCaprio, Bale, Adam Driver. I can't remember who else he may, may have been nominated with. And then at the very end, he was like, an, he's, and he said, and he said something to the effect of, and if we're being honest, I'm standing on the shoulders of my favorite actor. So I can't tell you how much of my thanks goes to Heath Ledger. Oh. And that was his speech, was basically, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Why do you people keep giving me this award? <laughs> Well, now I feel bad. And again, that was never to be a shot of. Oh, yeah. It's just. I think the Lala Land incident is really funny. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. I, at the toddies, almost really loudly multiple times. Because there were, there were moments where, like, the presenters <laughs> were struggling to open the envelope. And the amount of restraint to make a. It took me to not make a joke that was only relevant in 2016 for three weeks. Where I just really badly just want to be like, and the award for best lighting in a musical goes to. La La Land! Like, <laughs> I would have laughed. I would you would have laughed from like five towns over. Yeah, exactly. I would have felt would've... it. <laughs> and like, a sense of great disturbance in the force. As if a meme from four years ago was shouted into the Don't say that. Theater. Don't say it like that. That makes it gross. <laughs> four years ago. Jeez. But yeah, uh... This is almost a guarantee because the, the there are always like the OK, if it wins here, here and here, it's going to win at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Like the kind of litmus test for best actor is always if you win the Golden Globe and the SAG Award, you're going to win the Oscar. Like <laughs> mathematically, there's no way you don't. Something crazy would have to happen with the Academy between – because you have the crossover between who's yeah. in the Screen Actors or who's in the Screen Actors Guild and who is, you know, a part of like the Hollywood Foreign Press who also get to vote for the Oscars. And because there's that overlap there, if you win both, you're probably mathematically guaranteed to win at the Oscars. Um it's also I can't remember what the word is for it. But the way the Oscars are, it's also like a, this is my number one, this is yeah, my number two, I, this is my number three. Uh, Bibbs was talking about that on Twitter. Yeah. But like, I don't know if that's like that for every category. I know it's that way for Best Picture. Yeah. But like a weighted vote. A weighted vote. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, it it's going to be Joaquin Phoenix. He's going to win yeah. Best Actor. Um, like I said, I'm on the warpath to see all the Best Picture noms. Uh, I came so close with my Oscar pool last year. I was so impressed with myself because I remember like as a kid watching the Oscars and like, this is so cool. I've seen like two of these movies mm. as a kid. I was like, I've seen two of these, but like, it's just cool to see people celebrating film. And now that I'm like old enough to like appreciate movies yeah, that I'm like able to like seek out, be like, I'm going to watch this movie because so, uh, cause I can, so I can know if it's, uh, you know, worth watching. And there's also the fact that awards don't matter. Yeah. You know, like point blank, uh, the Renegade Cut, one of my favorite YouTube channels, uh, that's the one that started talking about mass casualty events in uh, terms of how many 9-11s it was. Oh, yes. Good. That did that video about George Bush that you enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to refrain from uh, speaking on that on like continue. Yeah. <laughs> Before I say something. I'll Not that it's funny. It just caught him off guard to yeah. hear it spoken as a metric <laughs> and it was one of those like uncomfortable laughs like i never thought of it like that holy shit um to clarify for people who weren't listening when we made when we talked we brought attention to that in on a past show i don't think we ever did we definitely did i don't think we ever did we definitely did i know we did um but anyway he did a very good video talking about like why the Oscars kind of matter. 
And like that's just kind of like the end result of it. I didn't finish the entire thing, but like he was like, these are the different ways it could matter. And each one it was like, I guess it kind of does, but also like, here's why they're here's why they're crap. Um, so I enjoy award season, but I also recognize that like so much of it is just yeah, it, 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 it's backroom politics. Oh yeah, at, at its at its absolute worst. Um, and how evil the four year consideration campaign can be. And, you know, the fact that that stuff finds its way back to Weinstein, you know, you got to call it like it is, you know, a lot of that stuff has his grimy paws all over it. But regardless, I quite enjoy award season and I'm looking forward to seeing how this shakes out. And I swear to God, if Joker wins best picture, if Phillips wins for screenplay or director, or if it wins best picture, I'm walking into traffic. <laughs> it's going to hit one of them. There's no way it can. There's no way it beats Sam Mendes for 1917. For, for directing. Like, how do you make a movie look like it's shot in one shot and you still I'm, lose? I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying it's going to hit one of them. I just don't know which. Oh, you really think it's going to win one of those three? I, I think so. I don't... I think you're right on the director. I think Sam Mendes takes director. Um, or they give it to like Scorsese or Tarantino just to – Yeah, it, 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 it's it, – that's a very stacked – like it's one of those – there's big names that could win because it's that person. I also just think again like the vision it takes to make the one take thing happen yeah, and on make its it look own. Good. On its own. That is something that just deserves that praise. Yeah. Um. I think its best shot is adapted screenplay. Again, adapted from what? I have been telling so many people the joke you made last week. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was adapted from King of Comedy. Yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. But, like, yeah, I just... But again, what, what else is it going against for best adapted? Hold on. I don't remember. I, I even... I, I looked... Uh, no, I didn't look at adapted screenplay. I looked at director and best picture. I looked at the big ones. Animated original music. Also, I saw this one thing. It was like, oh, The Rise of Skywalker is nominated for best original score. As much as I love the score, almost every single song in that movie is from a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, with the exception of, like, the new version of the Kylo Ren theme. One moment. Okay, best original, best original screenplay is Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Parasite, Knives Out, and 1917. Adapted is Jojo Rabbit, Little Women, The Irishman, The Two Popes, and Joker. Okay. Okay, I really think Little Women could gin check Joker. Yeah. I didn't realize Little Little Women was in there. And that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and Greta deserves that Oscar. Oh, God, I hope Little Women. I hope that, like, the movie that was, like, held up as, like, Incel Jesus loses to Little Friggin' Women. That would be so, like, just, just, there's just a level of, like, cosmic justice at play there. And then the full. I want to get to, like, <sighs> hold on. I'm just going to refresh this as it started at Best Actor. You started at Best Actor. So, thank you. Uh, and then the Best Actor pull in its entirety is Leo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory, Adam Driver in Marriage Story, and then Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. So yeah, I'm excited for Oscar night. I always love it. It's I, I just I love the Oscars. I know they suck, and I. And it, I'll admit, I the one that I watched live was the one where Leo won Best Oscar, and I got very excited for him. It Best Oscar? Best Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a that good night, guys. To be, that needs to be merch. That needs to be merch. Just, just an award that says the Best Oscar. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that was funny. Done. That was really cute. I love you so much. The best Oscar. <laughs> you won the best one. You, you won the best. It, it had an extra ounce of gold it in had it. An extra ounce. Um, 
No, you know what I meant. It was the 2016 I know. Oscars. It's, yeah, he won Best Actor. My the uh, uh, a woman I work with at the movie theater pointed something out to me because we were talking about the Oscar nominations and like what we both very angry about how many Joker got. <laughs> um, and she pointed something out to me that I was like really upset by immediately. And she was like, if Joker wins best actor or she was going to the to the fact that, like, depending on how many Oscars Joker wins on Oscar night. That the character of the it was best actor because you're specifically calling attention to Joaquin Phoenix and Heath Ledger playing the character Mm -hmm. that at that point, the fictional character of the Joker has more Oscar nominations and wins than any woman for best director. And how I'm sorry, and how fucked up that is. I <laughs> the, the, I hate that. The, the Joker has won more Oscars than a woman or person of color, period. <laughs> Individually, that's really awful. <laughs> like we we were so obsessed with this like fascinating yet meaningless character, and it's just kind of depressing when you think too think too hard about it. <sighs> but I think that brings us to the end of this episode. What's our what's our time looking like? Uh, hour and a quarter. I think this is our longest one of T nap. Yes. Yeah, I know. Nights was like two hours long. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it was a movie review. So. It was fun. Everyone seemed to be like. Like that one a lot. Everybody who spoke to me, I know uh, um, at the Amberlorian on Twitter, a very fun person to interact with. She messaged me on Twitter and she was like, Nights was a freewheeling nightmare. And I'm so glad that this is how the first episode of this show is went. <laughs> it was something to that effect. She was like, that was just so chaotic and I loved it. Yeah. Um, especially funny coming from the person who was on the first time we reviewed that movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Travis, where can the lovely people find you? On Twitter and on Instagram at Travis Political. Yes, I heard that. <laughs> at my Travis bones, Political. my bones and crunching. My, I want that boneless. <laughs> I don't, want my, don't, don't do that I, to me. I want my Jared boneless. <laughs> A bone, one the boneless bones. Bachman stubs, please. <laughs> Where can where can the people find the boneless fuck? <laughs> where can the people find the boneless fuck? <laughs> I hate everything that's happening right now. Hold on. I know exactly what you're doing, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for the. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. See, I could. I could punch you back and say what your nickname in that chat is. That just thinks everybody, man. And that's not on me. That's on you guys. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. Okay. Now, What's funny is... Now I have to explain it because now it, like, now it sounds like there's like something awful that we're hiding. As a joke to make fun of the like alt-right talk show host, Jesse Lee Peterson, we were talking about how much of a psychopath he is, and I... And how he refers to Donald Trump as the great white hope, which like, I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. Shit like that's just scary. Like, <laughs> like You shouldn't be calling referring to anybody like that. Like I'd take a bullet for Bernie Sanders. I'm not calling him like the great Jew hope like or anything like that. Like it's just a Jew hope, a Jew hope. That's a shirt. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's no, not. No, it's not. We shouldn't make that shirt. We can't make that shirt. But no. It should be a shirt somewhere. <laughs> I, I don't think it should no. be. He's like holding up the lightsaber. Like Luke with the, like bare chest and like it's, massive packs. It's no. Okay. So it's Mace Windu's hilt. But instead of where it says the thing it definitely has engraved on it, it says socialism. Mother fornicator. <laughs> instead of saying mother fornicator, it says socialism. <laughs> Just going down the side. But anyway, this guy refers to Donald Trump as a great white hope, and it just it, we all laughed at that name. And I looked at Travis and started to say that he's the great white hope, and that's his name in the 
TNAP chat. And I hate it. It's my name now in two room chats. It's your name in... <laughs> did, did, did your Walmart crew do yeah, it? Too? Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, here, wait. Let me let me give you our nick. It's only three of us, so I'm yeah. the great white hope. Um, <laughs> I'm newly dubbed boneless. The boneless. Uh, the one is the CEO of Anxiety, and the other is Conspiracy Man 777. <laughs> Who's the CEO of Anxiety? Uh, Tori. Nice. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm glad that the Great White Hope joke stuck, and I hope people start tweeting it at you. I hope they don't. I really hope they do. I really hope they don't. I hope people start taking clips from this show and, like, cutting it with Jesse Lee Peterson show clips. And it's just a picture of me. Yeah. Oh, I hate just it. Like, like, do you believe in the Great White Hope? <laughs> and it's just you just, like, dick does flips. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does uh you guys can find me on twitter and instagram at dark jedi 2552 where i am being very boneless online boneless i'm boneless don't put none of them shits on my pizza bro um be sure to follow and like uh the nerd academy, academy podcast, podcast on twitter instagram and facebook and check out our website, thenerdacademypodcast.com. Don't forget to look at the YouTube. Oh, and don't forget to look at the YouTube as well. I, I'm still not used to there being a YouTube. I know. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been so much fun so far. Uh, it, it's moments like these where it just turns into a freewheeling nightmare. Like, I really hope people at home are, like, enjoying just this – just just the, just yes. the, the chaos. Because, like, this is what I enjoy in a show – and I hope people enjoy the, 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 the nonsense. Yes. I, too, go to uh, podcasts about nerddom for the great white hope. <laughs> Class dismissed. No homework.